All right, for lesson 9.2, for the first part, uh, looking at a couple more rules for indefinite integrals. Um, keep in mind, a lot of these rules that you're going to see in this are on your formula packet. So, um, quick look at that. So, here's just the general uh, rules for working with integrals. This is what we covered in the last video. Um, I kind of like these because they are going to be good reminders for you to include your plus C whenever you're doing indefinite integrals. So, uh, you'll be looking at this when you take your test, hopefully. Uh, but a couple new ones that we're going to look at right now. One is uh, this idea right here. So if you have uh, something over x and we have x in our denominator like this, um, the rule for that is to do the natural log of that item plus c. Um, keep in mind the logic behind that. If you were to rewrite this um, as x to the negative first, well, when you do an integral, you're supposed to add 1 to your exponent. So if I have an exponent of negative 1, if I add 1 to that, I would have 0, um, and that would leave me with nothing. So uh, that, that wouldn't work. So you can't follow those basic rules. So uh, this is where the natural log rule kicks in, and so there's something more we can do with it that way. Um, and then the e to the x rule, super simple. Um, if you remember when we did derivatives, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So uh, when we do integrals and we go the other way, same thing. So integral of e to the x is e to the x. So keep those in mind, but those are some of the main ones that we're looking at on this. So this is just some explanation of the natural log rule that I just went over with you on the last page, as well as uh, the integral of e to the x. So those will be there for you on your formula packet, but here's just a couple examples to go with those. So notice on this one that uh, because we have x in our denominator, that's why we get the natural log rule. For this one, when we're doing the integral, um, you can separate out the constant. Uh, before you do the rule here. So just think of this as 7 times 1 over x. And so we know the integral of 1 over x is natural log of x. Then you can bring in the 7. Don't forget your plus c. And that's how that one would look. Same thing on this. And again, this, these are always going to help if you can separate out your constant on these. So uh, if I separate out the 1 half and just think of this as 1 over x times a half, well then we can do the, the integral of 1 over x becomes the natural log of x, and then you can bring in the 1 half and bring in the constant right there. So, um, and then again, just one more example as you uh, have the sum and difference rules. So, anytime you have terms separated by a plus or a minus sign, just do them both separately. So, for the first one, we know the integral of e to the x is e to the x, and so that's what you're seeing right here for the first term. Um, and then this for the natural log rule. So, now you have 5 times 1 over x, which becomes 5 natural log x plus c. So this one is key right here as you're looking at um, integrals with composite functions. This is a really big concept, um, really big issue on tests, uh, even all the way through the final students forget this rule and have issues with this and miss a lot of points uh, because they're going to forget one key step, and you'll see that here in a second. If we were going to integrate a composite function like this, and a composite function just means we have a, an interior function and an exterior function. So um, the, the following the general rules of finding integrals, we would say, well, we're going to add 1 to the exponent, so we get a power of 8. Then we divide by 8, and we get this look right here. And this is, maybe throughout the entire year, the most common mistake made on anything that we do. And students will leave it just like this um, and not take one more step. You Remember what we did with these when we were doing um, derivatives, when we were doing the chain rule, uh, we always had the extra step of multiplying by the derivative of the interior function. And that's going to be the extra key step when you're doing integrals as well. Remember, since integrals are the opposite of taking derivatives, Instead of multiplying by the derivative of the interior function, we're going to divide by it. Um, and so in this case, we'd have to take the extra step of dividing by 2. Or you could say I'm going to multiply by 1 half. Either way you want to look at that. Uh, essentially, we got to stick a 2 on bottom in order to complete the rule. So that's the extra key step, and that's what's stated right here. So if this is the composite function or the interior function, uh, you can see that we've got to include this. Um, just like the chain rule process when we're doing our integrals. So here's kind of a summary of this section in a nutshell. These are the three key rules um, that you got to be able to do for this section. 
So here's, and here's one example to go with each rule. So this is just the basic uh, chain rule concept uh, that I'm talking about for that previous paragraph right here. Um, so again, it just says to add one to your exponent, then divide by that number, but then you also have to divide by the derivative of the interior function, which is going to be a. And so that's where that key extra step comes in that so many people will forget on a test. So here's an example of that. Um, so again, I'm going to add one to my exponent. We're going to get a seventh power. So then we divide by seven. And then here's the extra key step. If you were to take the derivative of 4x minus 1, it would simply be 4. And so we also have to divide by 4. Or you could say I'm going to multiply by 1 over 4. Same thing. Um, and then do a little cleanup from here to get this look. But it's this extra step that you can't forget. Uh, so to apply the same concept for natural logs, again, if I have something over a function like this one where I have x in the denominator, uh, when we integrate, we know that's going to lead to a natural log. And so if you just kind of look at this first part for a minute, we know that 1 over whatever is the natural log of that function. And so we're getting the natural log of 12x plus 11. And then here's that extra really key step that you can't forget. And we are dividing by the derivative of the interior function. So here's our interior function. The derivative of that would be 12. So we are dividing by 12. So either, you know, you can either put this whole thing over 12 or stick the 1 12th in front. It doesn't matter which way you want to write that. And then, of course, you got your plus C on the end. And so one more look at that where you include E. So again, we know that um, the derivative and the integral of E to anything is simply that same function. So uh, the integral of e to the 7x plus 5 is still e to the 7x plus 5, but here's that one extra step of dividing by the derivative of the interior function. And so in this case, the derivative of the interior function would just be 7, so that's why we are dividing by 7. Last couple examples right here. Um, just, a, just another concepts, uh, the sum and difference concept within the integral process. So again, if you look at each term individually, so just start with the 20 over 4x plus 1, then we'll deal with the minus 3 second and keep those things separate. Uh, so if you were to just start with this first term, um, again, you can ignore the constant for a minute. Um, any Anytime we got the 4x plus 1 on bottom, right, the integral of that is going to include the natural log rule. So right here we have the natural log of 4x plus 1. Uh, we're keeping the constant right here separate. And then I'm going to remember that key step, which is to divide by the derivative of the interior function. And so we're going to divide by 4 as part of our first term. So the, from the 1 fourth over to the 20 is our first term. And now we're going to deal with the minus 3 as our second term. And so for this one, just for the minus 3, this would just become... 3x to the first over 1. And so that creates the next term. And then you got your plus 5. And anytime you can simplify, you always want to do that. So right here where I have the 1 fourth times 20 is going to give me that 5. And so this would be uh, the best way to write your answer for that one. Uh, if you want to give this next one a try, that would be a good thing to do. But again, you're going to ignore the constant for the end here. So save the 18. If we just said the integral of e to the 6x is just e to the 6x, and then we're going to divide by, again, the derivative of that interior function. So here's the 1 over 6, and now I can combine my 1 6 with my 18 and finish it off with that look right here. So here's just uh, one more concept. This is what we dealt with in our last video. Um, instead of keeping a plus c, uh, some cases they will give you some extra information like this so that we can get a value for C, and that's what you're seeing on this last problem. Keep in mind that when you deal with a position function, velocity, and acceleration, um, as you work your way down that ladder, you, you're doing derivatives, right? If this is what I started with as my position function, the derivative of this is velocity. So in this case, I'm starting with velocity, and I want to get the position function, so we're going the other direction here, so we're going to do an integral. So we're going to integrate this function, just like we've been, been doing in the last couple problems. So separated by a plus sign, so we'll treat each term separately. 
So if we were going to start with our first term, e to the negative 2t is e to the negative 2t times the derivative of the, or dividing by the derivative of the interior function. So since negative 2t is our interior function, we're going to divide by the derivative of that, which is just negative 2. So here we are dividing by negative 2. On your second term, this would become t to the second over 2. And so here's that second term right here, t to the second over 2. We have our plus c, but here's where we can go the extra step uh, because they are telling us that t is 0 when s is 2. And so now that we have this function, I can replace my t with a 0, set the whole thing equal to 2. And so if you were to solve that for c, you get c is 5 halves. And so now we can take that extra step and replace our c with 5 over 2. And so we're just going to stick a 5 over 2 right there. One possible way you could write this, um, you could just leave it like this with all the 2's on bottom. Your other option would be to factor out a 1 half since every term has one, and you could write it like this. Uh, neither is more correct than the other. E either way you want to write that answer would, would work.